Welcome to Boot to Boom Now, the number one live streaming show, the number one live streaming entrepreneur show, taking you from bootstrap to booming. We are here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, and we are here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are here every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern to get your PayPal popping, your business booming, and your life and your relationships to explode. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Boot to Boom Now, the number one live streaming show for entrepreneurs to take you from bootstrap to booming. We are here every Tuesday night, even when there's election, we don't care, we still here at 9 p.m. Eastern. We are here to get your PayPal popping, your business booming, and your life and your relationships to explode. <laughs> I am your host. Ava Laura, CEO of Ava Laura's Healing Center and founder of Boot to Boom. And you see my amazing co-host. We're we gonna call her Face. That's that's our new nickname, Face. Uh, Jessica <laughs> Walker, <laughs> creative director, marketing director of Boot to Boom and CEO of Jaw Research Institute. Hey Jessica, how are you doing tonight? I am good. How are you, Ava Laura? I'm awesome. I'm sane. I'm here. I'm not, you know, running myself <laughs> ragged and crazy like so many people tonight, right? People are going uh, crazy. Like, it's okay. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. I stayed off of the digital streets today. <laughs> I actually voted by mail. I was like, yeah, bubbling these bubbles like I'm back in LA. <laughs> right? And put it in the mailbox. Boom. I said it. it's, two, it's 2016. When, when, when technology gonna catch up? Why am I still? Yeah. Why am I still circling in bubbles like I'm taking standard access? What's really going on here? <laughs> <laughs> like that's what took me so long. I had to find the right bubble. I was like, wait, let me make sure. I, yeah. I, I was like, wait, Trump, Hillary. Oh wait, wait. I gotta make sure I get the right one. Let me line it up. I don't want to do the wrong one yeah. by accident. <laughs> right? For real. For real. No, I was like, I, you know what? What's so funny is that there were more people to choose from. I was like, wait a minute. Right. I thought it was only Trump and Hillary. That's what I said. I looked at I was like, wait, there's more people? Who are they? <laughs> I almost voted for, just, just on general, you know, GP. I was like, Marilyn, Hillary going away anyway. Who are these people? Let me vote for, let me, let me give you some love. But I, I don't know who they were. So. <laughs> I'm not gonna say who I voted for, but I gave some love to the people that didn't show their faces. So <laughs> okay. that's who that's what I did. I voted for. I was like, oh yeah, haven't seen you, hun. And yeah, I'm gonna vote for you. I'm gonna give you some some, some hearts here. Give right. some hearts. So welcome everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome. So I see a few of you are in here and um we can't see your lovely faces. So I'm gonna just start going over some housekeeping. Um, if you want to be seen, if you want to be in the chat, if you want to take selfies, you want to ask questions, if you want to get in here um, and ask questions, um, when our guest comes on, you have to create an account so we can see you because a lot of you are kind of like hidden right now. So, um, incognito. yeah, basically. So we can't, we can't see you. So if you want to do that, if you want to be able to interact with us and you definitely want to go back out, um, create an account really quickly. It's very easy and come back in and join us. All right. We are very interactive. We do look at your questions. We do read your comments. So we definitely want to see you. Um, so just some quick, Quick, uh, you know, uh, housekeeping. Use the hashtag uh, boot number two boom. When you do that, it will show up on the screen. It's kind of cool. So you can use the hashtag on Twitter and you can also use the hashtag in our Facebook group. 
uh, Boot to Boom as well. We do have a Facebook group. If you're not in it, you want to get in it because we are rolling. Even though we're here every Tuesday, um, we are there every day. So you definitely want to get in that if you're not there already. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Some other, other housekeeping. Um, we want to make sure that you know how to use all of the features here on Huzzah, which is a... Is being moderated. We are looking at what's going on. And um, if you want to say something again, you can make comments and it'll come up in the chat. Hey, Brian. See, like Brian just gave us a thumbs up. So we see Brian over there. Yeah. So you can do yeah, that. Dave's over there as well. Dave said, yeah. <laughs> it's also really cool. You can take selfies, y'all. Go ahead and take a selfie. I think it's so cool. It'll come up during the broadcast as well. So take a cool selfie. Get crazy. Have fun with that. Uh, Q and A. This feature is important. If you have a question, you want to put it in the Q and A section because that way it's highlighted. Sometimes uh, your comments just get lost in the chat, just depending on how many comments we get. Yeah, look at Dave. I love the selfie. Hey, okay. <laughs> we got our first selfie. I love it. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So if you want to ask a question, put it in the Q and A section. And then that way we'll see it and we can um, pop it up on the screen. Um, also, just, you know, we, we, we are here in the rule. We believe that you should share this out. So sharing is caring. Share this broadcast out. Click on the share link and share it on Facebook. Share it on Twitter. If you want to get in, if you have a question for our guests, um, then you have to tweet for a seat. So you got to tweet it out. Use the hashtag boot to boom. To do that, yes. uh, we got another one. Hello and aloha. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're excited that you all are here with us tonight. Um, we, we know that you're serious. Like, we know you're the serious entrepreneur if you're here tonight, because while everybody is watching the madness, y'all are here trying to get fed. And so we are here to feed you. We are here to make sure that you get your PayPal popping and your business booming. So make sure you ask questions. Um, we definitely want to hear from you. We have an amazing guest for you tonight. Amazing guest. Um, you all are just, wow. you'll, you'll see. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I will definitely uh, be introducing our guests in a second. How do you share? Um, I wish I had the feature. It looks different on my screen. There is a share. Uh, it kind of looks uh, like a porn. Oh, to the bottom. Ted, can you go ahead and scroll the video of sharing for us, please? Hey, Taryn. Welcome. Yeah, it kind of looks like a horn um, and is at the bottom. There we go. So if you take a look at our video here, you yeah. can kind of see down at the bottom, you can go ahead and click the share button. All right. Hopefully you you're able to see that. that. Uh, Boot to Boom is going to be at PNC. Remember PNC? Power Networking Conference. It is the number one conference for black entrepreneurs. It is the number one networking conference for black entrepreneurs. We are going to be having speakers from PNC um, on the show, so you definitely want to check that out. But we really want to see you there live. We're going to be in Maryland at the National Harbor, July 6th through the 8th. Jessica's coming all the way from California. So if you are in and around the D.C. area, particularly if you are within, you know, four hours driving distance, you really, really, really have no excuse. You don't even have to get on the plane. You can drive here. So you have no excuse, but you really want to be here. And to make sure that you are here, we are committed to you showing up and really just getting all the goodness that's going to be there, all the resources, all the networking. We have an amazing deal just for you because you are a part of the Boot to Boom family. All right. If you go to the Power Networking Conference website, you're going to see that tickets are $8.99 for this conference, $899. And I will tell you, it's well worth it. I was there last year. Uh, we had an awesome time, awesome time. Um, it, was, it was just phenomenal in so many words. I mean, literally up from sunup to sundown, networking. I mean, just so much goodness, so many amazing speakers, classes, workshops. It was, it was like goodness overwhelmed. It was amazing. So it's worth the $8.99. But we want to make sure that you're there. We want to make it accessible for you. So because you're a part of the Boot to Boom family, we have tickets just for you at $399. So we are taking $500 off the price. 
You can only get that here. So if you want to join us and we're going to be having special incentives for you, we're going to, you know, have something special for our boot to boom peeps that show up that come. Um, make sure you email us. All you got to do to get the tickets, email us boot number two boom at gmail.com. Tell us, just say PNC. Yeah, right. We'll know you want to go and uh, we will give you the link to sign up for PNC and we'll see you here at the National Harbor in Maryland in the D.C. area in July. There you go. Email us boot number two boom at gmail dot com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. OK, so we have a quick question for you all. I think you got that. Hopefully you all know how to share. So hashtag uh, boot to boom. Get it out on Twitter. Get it out on Facebook. Let everybody know that we're live, that we're on right now. So we have a quick poll. We want to know how um, how did you hear about today's show? So give us a one if it was Facebook. Give us a two if you got a tweet, uh, a three if you got a notification from Huzzah. Um, see, it on mo see it on mobile. Okay, what mobile? Four um, if you got an email and five if it's other. So we just want to know how did you all find out about today's show. So yeah. just put, put your numbers up. Throw your numbers up. Let's see your numbers. Three. Awesome. Thank you. Who else? Okay. Yeah. If you got a notification Color. on your mobile phone. Yeah. Notification would be three. Yep. Yep. So keep doing that. We want to know how you heard because we want to know what's working. Like we want to know, um, where you're at, how to find you, right? Don't see sharing button on mobile. Oh, got you. Don't see it on mobile. Yeah, mobile. Uh, mobile's yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll Thank put you that the video for the. <laughs> yeah, mobile is a little different. Yeah. So keep throwing your numbers up. We want to know how you heard about today's show. Um, we also want to hear from you. If we haven't already, we definitely want to hear from you. Make sure you fill out our survey. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we always serve at you, you know, not cause we're trying to be annoying or anything, but because we really want to know what you want. You know, that's the yeah. best way for us to be able to give you what you want. What guests do you want to see? What topics do you want to hear about? What do you need in your business? Right? What are, where are some of the areas where you're having challenges, where you need help? So we want to hear from you. We want to know. So you see the link to go ahead and fill out the survey. Um, also, the big thing that we've done, uh, we want to make sure that you get in on, is the resource list. We are very, very proud of this resource list. We have put our heart and our soul into this resource list. We have given you over ten thousand dollars worth of, you know, training. Um, you know, just oper different opportunities for your businesses, workshops, events, things like that. It it, it changes every week. Um, so yes, click on the link. The link will be added to the chat. We update it every week. So even if you got it last week, you want to plug into the resource list this week because there's going to be new offerings on there. Okay. So definitely plug into that. Make sure you get the resource list, go through it. We're going to be talking about some of the things, um, actually today, right. In our pop and talk, we'll be talking about a few things, um, that we're offering as well on there today. So mm -hmm. I think with that being said, um that's 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 all i got right i'm still waiting to see the numbers i don't i don't see any numbers up here your comments aren't working i see that comment so that means it's working <laughs> what about the rest of you <laughs> <laughs> what, look, what about the rest of you where did you come from like i don't see these comments what's going on <laughs> uh, Alrighty. All right. Okay. If you haven't been to Boots and well, before, we have fun. Yes, this is a business show, but we have a good time <laughs> as well. Okay. Email All right, today. So thank you. Yay. All right. One. Thank you, yes. Baby. Thank you. Okay, but you also can if you if you if you're on and let's say you can't comment, you can also take a selfie and just put up the number two, the number one, the number five, whatever number it was. So we would love to see you and see your selfie picture here. So you can definitely do that if you cannot type in the comments or if you just having comment problems tonight. Um, all right, so I want to go ahead and I would like to introduce you to our 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 amazing amazing founder, um, Ava Laura. So, 
Ava Lar is an internationally celebrated intuitive consultant and life coach who takes her clients from whole to wholeness in their life, relationships, and business. She guides you through a powerful healing process that helps you discover who you are, who you wish to be, and how to get there. If now's the time for you to live a freedom-focused life, detox yourself of self-limiting beliefs, get clear, focused, and confidently excel in your life and in your business, then Ava Laura is the guy you've been waiting for. Contact her today, Ava Laura at avalora.com. All right, that's my amazing founder, Ava Laura. Thank you. Queen. Thank you. And uh, let me just tell you a little bit about Face. Or Jessica Walker, if you miss. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I swear, if I get some on Facebook talking about the face, I'm gonna be real mad at you, Avon. <laughs> I love these selfies, y'all. Okay, I want to see more selfies. That's so freaking yes, awesome. Yes. Thank you, Misty. Please. That was so Thank cool. <laughs> We, we can't take selfies, so I have to live vicariously okay. through you all, okay? So we want to see some selfies because I can't take one. Y'all know I'm a selfie take queen. Them. I make them. <laughs> All right, so let me tell you about Miss Jessica or Faith. Uh, <laughs> Jessica is an experienced online business consultant that has over a decade in assisting SME business owners within the digital media sector. Throughout her 25 years of practice, and I know it don't look like 25 years because she looked like 25 years old, but anyway, throughout her 25 years of practice, she has worked with well-known Wall Street and Fortune 500 companies, television celebrities, healthcare providers, leading public figures and community leaders, and Jessica believes that we all have a purpose, right? That God put us here to help others, and she believes that she is here to help you and you are here to help someone as well. So she wants to help you to show up in your life and in your business by creating your own show or your own online platform. So thank you, Miss Jessica. That is our uh, my awesome co-host. Thank you for being here, holding it down. So what is our popping topic for today? So our popping topic is actually something that um, I really excel in. Like I'm not good at a lot of stuff, but this right here, I got, I, I got a lot of this. I can tell you, I, I got videos to show you, to show you I got a lot of this, but since I didn't run it past my, uh, maybe I'll show you guys the next one. So that'll give you all the incentive you need to come back so you can see my crazy videos. Um, but we are talking about confidence, right? So many people out there, they don't move forward in their lives or in their business because they just don't have the confidence factor. And confidence is basically what you're telling yourself about yourself. It's everything, all those thoughts that you believe um, to be true about yourself that kind of like we talked about with Ava Lore's, um bio, those self-limiting beliefs, right? Those things that hold you back and keep you from living your life truly authentically in the way you're supposed to um, and showing up the way you're supposed to in your life. Um, now, how does that hold you back in your business? Well, you can't excel. You end up not asking for the sale. You end up not moving forward with the sale. <laughs> you end up not going and meeting that uh, person that you were supposed to, okay. You end up not meeting that person that you were supposed to meet because you felt that something inside of you, that intuitive nature, that something that told you, hey, go say hello to that person, go introduce yourself. And instead of doing that, you got blocked by fear. You got blocked by, hey, maybe they don't wanna meet me or, um, I'm not a celebrity or I'm not X, Y, and Z. And it took you away from what you were really supposed to do, right? It took you away from that destiny that you were really supposed to fulfill because you just weren't confident in yourself because you're so busy talking to yourself instead of doing the action, <laughs> instead of moving forward and stepping into your life and your business as you're supposed to and show up the way you're supposed to. So Ava Laura has some great insight on this. So I, I definitely want to bring her in and she better not yell at me at the next team meeting for bringing her in on the popping topic because I got her on Snapchat and I've, I'm going to play it back for y'all so y'all can hear it. Y'all think Ava Laura, Ava Laura is not no joke when you pull her in. But anyway, so <laughs> with that being said, <laughs> and I, yes, I'm putting you on front street. Ava Laura. It, it so takes Ava confidence Laura. to hold people accountable to their <laughs> actions. <Okay? laughs> I have no problem <laughs> holding people accountable. <laughs> that that is a part of the confidence, and and you know, and Jessica's right. And we we wanted to talk about this today, and you'll see 
with our guest because if he don't have nothing else, he got confidence. And Definitely. that has served him really well. And so we want, you know, we, we just want you to think about this because I think a lot of people don't, you know, we, we, we focus on, oh, I have to have a website. I got to have business cards. um, I got to, you know, I have to have branding. I got to get these professional photos. I have to have funnels and, you know, all of this technical stuff, right? But really the common denominator in all the interactions that you're going to have with anybody is you. Yep. So how are you showing up in your business? How are you showing up in the world? How are people perceiving you? That is your greatest mm -hmm. asset. So if you're not mm -hmm. together, and like I say, if your mind ain't right, your business not going to be tight. Yeah. So you're not confident in you. If you wouldn't buy from you, guess what? Nobody else will. Mm -hmm. Nobody else will. And so exactly. confidence is huge. You have to be confident in who you are and what you're offering to the world. That is how you're going to become a successful entrepreneur. Yeah. And as a lawyer to um, just kind of extend that thought as well. Um, I think, you know, for my clients, I know for yours, but for me, especially, I get a lot of clients that come to me and they're just like, oh, um, I don't want to sound salesy or, you know, I just didn't feel comfortable enough to ask. And it was like, uh, do you have something of value? Do you believe in that something? Then why wouldn't you ask to be paid? You know, so that's Absolutely. that's my thing about it is that you just you, you have to stand up confidently and you have to ask to get paid because nobody's going to say, you know what? Oh, my gosh, that information you gave me. OK, you'll get one or two people, but not everybody. Every, most people want to just get off. They want to. <laughs> oh, people <laughs> like people free. free. People <laughs> like free. They are not going to pay you if you don't ask. Let's be clear. If you don't ask and say, <laughs> hey. I know that I'm valuable and I know the information that I'll give to you is useful. You know, it's, it's, it's the way that I positioned it to a client was, you know what? You are not going to find Jordans at the dollar store. All right. If you want something of value, you need to go and pay for it because you're going to get something of value. Now, when you go to the dollar store, then you know that whatever you get is going to be that dollar and nothing above that dollar. Uh, you're but you have to go next week for another item, for another item, right? <laughs> you're going to be coming back next week for another service, so on and so forth. So you have to make sure that you position yourself to get around other people that also think in that same mindset and that you yourself stand up and go, I'm valuable. I'm worth every single penny without a doubt. Um, and I know that um, I can provide the service that you need. So don't be afraid to ask for the sale is my basic gist. I want to tell all of you guys that get out there and make it happen. Um, I tell a lot of people, Jesus was a carpenter. But if you think he laid one little wood peck down without getting paid, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So, so with that being on. said, ask for the sale. Make sure you get that resource list. I have an awesome Thank course you. on there. Awesome yeah. course, Magnetic Confidence. Stop. And, um, you know, normally I sell it um, for $97, even though it's way, worth, worth way, way more. And mm -hmm. I started thinking about, like, what do I want to do for my boot to boom piece? Because um, mm -hmm. we always try to do something good for you. So um, mm -hmm. for 24 hours, so I want to make sure y'all are pay paying attention. So 24 hours, um, instead of $97, I will be offering that course for $49. That's only for 24 hours. That means. <laughs> 10 o'clock tomorrow it is over please don't email me don't text me ava laura oh my god it's um 10 01 can i get no it you know what i'm gonna actually tell you guys ava laura will do it ava laura will do it so if you if you still want it tell her jessica sent you <laughs> but I, what i want to be confidently is, shaking my head no <laughs> And I'm confidently believing that Ava Lore will give it to you because Ava Lore is a gem like that. But here's the thing. Jesus went out there. He laid those wood, those wood pallets, right? But then he was able to get paid so he can get out there and further his mission. He can get out there and help the people that he really was there. Just, you know, he was truly able to serve. He was able to travel. He was able to do other things because he had the means to do so. So really truthfully think of yourself that way. I, you know, I'm sorry for anyone that doesn't believe in, you know, the religion, whatever. But... I do want to let you know that you definitely, if you, can, if you can't take anybody else's story, you can take that one and know that if you are paid for what it is that you do, you can get out there and help and serve more people. All right, I'm done. All awesome. Right. Somebody's asking for the resource list. Um, we will mo make sure that the link is posted in the chat so you can get that. Miss Taryn, yes. thank you. Yes, yes, yes. So now, uh, Ava Laura, who do we have as our guest tonight? Yay! Yay! So our guest tonight 
is Mr. Dave Anderson. He is a best-selling author, successful speaker, and communications innovator. I think that's cool. Like, I want, I want to know more about that myself. Um, <laughs> he has booked over 200 speaking engagements with top companies, including Nutrisystem, iHeartMedia, Reach Media, and ADT. He has appeared on CNN, Bravo, VH1, and has also been interviewed by the Huffington Post and AllHipHop.com, the Philadelphia Inquirer, and Ebony Magazine. He has worked with nationwide personalities, including Ricky Smiley, Wendy Williams, and DJ Clue. Please give me, join me in welcoming Mr. Dave Anderson. Woo! We need, we need hand clap. Now, yeah, at some point we're going to get a hand clap, but until then, we're going to do all the clapping around here. Wave your hands in the air. Wave your hands. <laughs> just don't care. And uh, hopefully we can oh, there he is. I was like, there he is. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, y'all y'all are real hyper for tonight. Uh, so we're going to yeah, get y'all on the sugar-free diet. You know, <laughs> right now, just, just Listen, some, I'm on some diet half and half right now. Oh, this is me with the cold tonight. So, I, you know, I'm on pure gel- gen- adrenaline right now wow. and cold medicine. I don't, want, I don't want not one antioxidant you're taking because you are like, oh, <laughs> it's like Buster Rhymes with a head wrap. And I sit alone, I'm like this. No, 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 like, I'm like this. I'm like this. Buster Maybe Rhymes, you bro, like, this. Let me just let me <laughs> hold on. You could not have chosen a, 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 an attractive rapper. I mean, Buster Rhymes, really? I'm a guy, so I don't know what attractive rappers. Buster Rhymes is a he good ain't attractive. He ain't, well, no, he is. He got a certain swag to him. He got a certain thing. Now, if he said common, you know, that'll be like, all right. Oh, you gotta be the stereotypical <laughs> chick with a head wrap. You know, common's the best rapper. <laughs> Okay. You tried it. All right. You back to business. Ava Laura, question. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Back to the regularly scheduled program. Just uh, <laughs> thank you for giving us a minute. Thank you. Mr. Anderson, how are you tonight? I am quite well, and how are you? I'm wonderful. So <laughs> tell us. So um, why did you decide to become an entrepreneur? Um I started my career at nine years old, um, just uh, as a radio personality. Um, I called in a radio show, um, talked to Curly Neal from the Harlem Globetrotters. He said jokingly to the host and the producer, yo, you should hire that kid. He's incredible. So they called my mom. They hired me, and I I didn't stop working then. Um, So I moved around, and what I found in radio and in television and sales and marketing, people have a lot of things going well for them, and the one thing that they have badly going for them that I just can't tolerate is tradition. I'm not here for people to do same things the same way all of the time. I was a kid who would take ice trays, put Kool-Aid in them with a piece of fruit and then sell them to the kids in the neighborhood with a toothpick after they froze over, you know, for 25 cents. I always wanted to do something different. You know, um, mm-hmm. my last uh, my last broadcasting gig was um, at iHeartMedia. And the thing that really <laughs> tick, ticked me off was that the things that I was doing then they were not ready for. And now when I went back to promote my uh, 50 week best selling book, Pitch Close, Upsell, Repeat, um, <laughs> what wound up happening was the things that I was condemned for are now practiced across the entire company. You know, make sure you're like updating your, okay, make sure you're updating your Twitter, your personal Twitter, your personal Snapchat, Instagram, all of those things. Make sure that you're talking to your audience. Um, I got I got remember I got rammed into a meeting with corporate because I was doing a podcast that was focused on um, motivation and entrepreneurship and getting your own, and they had such an issue with that. And now the oldest jock uh, in the company in in Philadelphia is now doing a podcast with millennials to get in touch with that audience. And I'm like, I had that audience six years ago, but y'all didn't. So I got sick of people telling me that you know, what I was doing was crazy or wouldn't work or didn't make sense. And I realized then and there that, well, number one, I'm a Scorpio. Number two, I'm sick of making people millions of dollars off of ideas that they don't even trust when I know that this stuff will work. So I said, you know what? 
man, I'm not going through this anymore. I don't want to pack up a U-Haul. I want to kind of stay someplace and, and be with my family and expand my family. And so, um, yeah, that was pretty much it. But I've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. But that was the straw that kind of broke the camel's back for me. Yeah. We, we we all have that moment where it's like, you know what, enough is enough. Mm -hmm. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And then you got a choice to make. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, where did that come from? Like, just always wanting to do things a little bit differently. I was a different kid. Like, I always was a different kid. My mother um, is a second generation teacher. Um, her older brother um, worked at MIT and played with Carlos Santana at Woodstock. So this is the genetic hodgepodge that makes me who I am. I also have the tenaciousness of my father's law enforcement background and his no-nonsense attitude. So you marry those things together, and I'm weird compared to the rest of the, the average citizen because i don't I, I don't just take things at face value if it's not a fact um if you are saying i can't do it i'm going to do it anyway and you know that's just how i've always been so i think the things that make me weird um are the things that make me special and and the things that make me special are the things that make me money you know as evidenced by pitch close upsell repeat which is uh, <laughs> available right now in bookstores nationwide which is so sure. funny because you are pitched right now. You're pitched did, I, right. did I pitch something? Did, did was, I? No. Oh, you're talking about this? Oh, no. <laughs> I was just making a point to illustrate that this best selling book actually <laughs> changed thousands and hundreds of thousands of people's lives. So I feel like it's an important thing. And because I saw something differently in the way that people handle sales techniques, um, mm -hmm. People are doing things, you know, um, with the Dave Anderson method. Now, there's some things in here that I did not originate, but the majority of it comes from, you know, a good six years uh, of just working sales from different things. I sold gutters. I sold home security systems. You know, I sold water on, on the street. So you take all of those experiences and you find out what works. You get down to the human experience. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not pitching. I'm stating actual facts. Okay. <laughs> so, so. We talked about that confidence thing. So y'all are seeing it in action. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. See, let me break this down. I, I have y'all snowed. I am absolutely incredibly shy, um, mm -hmm. but I would rather hide in plain sight than, you know, have somebody else dictate the narrative. I don't want somebody talking about Dave Anderson when Dave Anderson can talk about himself and get it accurate, mm -hmm. you know, so I am confident in spite of the, the kid who got picked on, the, the fat boy who was not cool enough, the, the kid who didn't speak the way everybody else in the hood spoke. So, yeah. um, you know, the confidence that you see is in spite of all of those things, I fight those things, but I've built a, a certain, I, I built a certain muscle and it's that muscle that allows me to, uh, you know, speak this way and know that based on that and results that I'm gonna bring it every single time. No, I speak a lot about that, about building the confidence muscle, about different activities and different things that you can do to build that muscle, because I truly believe that we're all born with it. But mm -hmm. somewhere along the line, you know, we get knocked down by societal, you know, different things that happen. Mm -hmm. It pushes us back. And Absolutely. that's where we start to get these these uh, thoughts and things that, you know, kind of start to nag us. For, so for you, what was like the thing that moved you forward? You were like, you know what? Because I know you call yourself the business bully. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> what moved you to, hey, you know what? I'm going to bully everybody else in, into business or tell me a little bit more about the name and how it all came about. Okay, well, um, I am very, very direct. There are people in this chat room right now. I remember once I, uh, I was sitting at a meeting um, with other business owners and folks were talking about what they were doing in the step and third. And there was, you know, this, this, this lovely young lady off in, in the corner and she looked like she wanted to say something, but she didn't say anything. And then I, I said, well, what's going on? She's like, well, you know, I'm having these issues with my job shipping and I don't know exactly what I should do. And I'm like, okay, well, did you do this? Did you do that? What about this? Have you gone to like, and sometimes it's such an organic process that it takes over over me and by the time I looked up and stopped to catch a breath I just saw tears flowing down her face and I, I gave her some tissues and I said listen I promise you if you do these things you won't have to worry you know and year over year I mean she'll tell you herself she has consecutive um, five-figure months you know and even when the, 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 the low time kicks in it's still not as low as it was you know 
two years ago when we started working together. Now, there was a comment that um, somebody made on Facebook when I pointed out some extremely important business flaws to someone who asked. I don't just go around giving unsolicited yeah. advice, but if you put it out there and I see mm -hmm. a need that I can come in here and help, I'm going to give you some help. So I mm -hmm. came in and and yeah. then somebody <laughs> said, Oh, Dave Anderson, you could be nicer. You're just so rough. You're a business bully. I said, trademark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's just that's just what that's just what it was. Like, okay, if, wow. if you're gonna if you're gonna tell me that I'm gonna be like Reggie Nobles, aka uh, Red Man, and I'll be that. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it works yeah. because this is what everybody else does. Let me show you what everybody else does in business. Oh, mm -hmm. Let me hug you. Let me give you an award for participating. Let me tell you that your crap doesn't stink and it actually does smell like cinnamon toast mm -hmm. crunch and rainbows. And <laughs> that leaves you broke, but feeling really good about being broke. And I'm not here to do that. I mean, gotcha. You know, you can go to Dr. Phil for that. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm here for this bread. I feel like when I speak to clients and I want to ask you and Ava Laura, actually, because I want to bring Ava Laura into the conversation a bit, because you guys are very two confident people um, that I really, that I look up to in, in, you know, this whole business and online entrepreneurship and all that good stuff. Um, so I had a client that came to me um, that was talking about, you know, their business and kind of what they want to do. It was actually a speaker. Um, and they wanted to um, speak around the world. And I'm like, why don't you build your own platform? Why don't you? And they were like, uh, well, no, I think I just need to get on this stage or I need to get on, you know, I need to go here or I need to wait for somebody else to pick me up. What are your thoughts on that about people kind of staying stagnant and not believing in themselves enough to take that step forward to build their own? Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I will say this. No, no, legitimately, that's a choice. It's a completely yeah. stupid and horrible one, but it's a choice. Here's the thing. There are only two types of people in the world. Mm -hmm. There are the people who go and they buy the ticket and they get their nachos, their popcorn and their beer, and they take themselves a seat and they watch the show. Mm -hmm. Then there are the people who work hard, bust their behinds, make it happen every single day, have days where they forget to eat. Like today, I forgot to eat. It was like 2.30 in the afternoon. I was looking at my wife. I was like, what did I eat today? She said, nothing. You went out, you voted, you, 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 le you left, you, you started doing some errands, you came back, and now we're going shopping. You haven't eaten. See, when you're working in your purpose, you forget to eat. Yeah. You know, and, and for a fat man, that's an amazing feat. But the point of it is, those people are the people who are on the stage. Yeah. Those are the people that the people who I say get the tickets and get the nachos and the popcorn and the nice little seat and they're watching and they're looking up. That's who mm -hmm. they're looking at. And yeah. if you choose to not stand in your purpose, if you choose not to expose your particular brand of truth and greatness to the world, well, then by all means, get yourself some popcorn, a beer and some nachos and sit back in this seat and watch me go because that's what you're going to be doing. And yeah. that's a choice. Nice. And Ava Laura. Yeah, it's a choice. Um, you know, Dave, I, I really liken it to what you said in the beginning that I, I really believe that the most successful entrepreneurs are people who aren't traditional, who do mm -hmm. find their own path and they, they, they just they follow it to the wheels fall off. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, I think that a lot of people, particularly seeing it now, and I think because of social media, are making the choice to you know, do everything like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I have to have a website that looks like this because everybody else has it. Um, I have to have a Twitter page or a Facebook page that does this because that's what everybody else is doing. So it's like everybody's sort of following these trends. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's what I see. And, and so for that particular person, I think that at a time that used to be the trend, mm -hmm. you know, that, that used to be the come up, but we are not in that space anymore. Like now it's all about you, you know, who are you? Why are you here? I, hell, I'll, I'll be the head rap queen. That's what makes me stand out. Pretty Nobody much. else is going to go into a meeting with head wraps. Nobody goes into a meeting with a mohawk. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it, it is all about you um, creating your own platform now. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to get seen. That's how you're going to get heard. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody cares about the people who are waiting on the sidelines to get on somebody else's platform. You create your own platform and then other people are going to invite you onto their platform. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
Yep. Yeah. Nobody really wanted me until I started winning. Boom. You know, you know and that's and that's just what it is. When I when I was homeless six years ago, and you know my career took a dive, my finances took a dive, my credit took a dive. I had to stop um, construction on my. You know, 3,500 square foot home uh, in the suburb of Dallas, um, you know, break up with somebody who was completely toxic for me. Um, my phone just literally stopped ringing. Not because I didn't pay the bill either, <laughs> you know, but I was no longer <laughs> useful to people, you know? Yeah. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's what's funny. We, we put stock in, oh, I've got 65,000 friends. And look, yeah. psh, I'll tell you all the time, I got 2,500 subscribers on my YouTube, but 2.5 million hits. So, yeah. You know, you're worrying about getting numbers. I'm worried about getting eyes and ears. You know, exactly. I'm worried about touching somebody's heart and having them say, look, this dude is crazy, but what he's saying is like, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, so he's nuts, yeah. but what he's saying is even crazier. You yeah. know, so that that's what it is. And you're not you're not going to get there collecting likes and and, and hashtags and, and cutesy little um, memes and retweets. Like, that doesn't give you what you need to get to the next level. You have to yeah. connect with people where they are and stop looking or seeing what somebody else is doing, especially in the social media space. Oh my gosh. Um, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Dave, you, you said something so important. I wanna I wanna go back because you know, I want people to really hear that. So you were homeless. Like, mm -hmm. how did that happen? And how did you get from that space? Because <gasps> you could have stayed down. <laughs> No, um, you, we could be, you could still be homeless right now. So how did you come up out of that? Um, wow, that's a, that's a great question. Um, the uh, Let's start about how I got there. Um, and I talked about this when I went on The Breakfast Club. Me and Ricky Smiley, um, I put Ricky Smiley in the syndication in over 30 markets. Um, when I got to that show, I'd taken it over. I think I was like the sixth producer, seventh producer, something like that. And I come in and I said, okay, this is what we're going to do. And I put my hands on everything from the audio you heard to the way that the show was structured to who was talking during what break. Because there were seven people on the show when I got there. I whittled that down to five and only three had real, park, uh, real talking parts. So I, I streamlined the clutter. And then once I did that, then we started moving in a different direction. Um, I knew that Wendy Williams was getting ready to do her TV show. So I made sure that when that was happening, that that press junket rolled through right before we left Dallas and went to Miami to go put on Miami. And I had her do an interview for, for, for you know, the national market. And I had to do an interview for Miami, you know, so I was doing things very strategically. And then there were things that Ricky was doing that um, didn't jive with corporate. And so they pulled me in a room, all these corporate figureheads, and they said, listen, if you don't get Ricky under control, then you're going to come in there one day and it'll be D.L. Hughley and these nuts, because the show is called Ricky Smiley and these nuts, and or Rudy Rush and these nuts. And so this is somebody that's like one of my best friends. So you're putting me in a position yeah. where I have to corral my best friend damn near and still keep corporate happy without letting them letting him know what I know. So I'm walking around with this deep, dark secret. And it got to a point where I said to him, I said, look, man, this is, these are what the studies are saying. This is what's happening. And then it got really, really ugly. And when it got really ugly, he said some things that you just can't come back from. And I was like, okay, cool. So, we, you know, we tried to, um, at least I did and corporate did try to have conversations to get him to understand what was at stake. Um, those conversations never happened. I went home for Christmas, um, thinking we're getting ready to go to Obama's inauguration two weeks later. And I was, uh, I, I got a text message and a phone call and that was the end of that. So you fast forward six months and, you know, nobody's hiring me, nobody's calling, my savings dwindling. I mean, I'm, you know, two cars, a, a driver, you know, all, all the fly stuff that you have when you're living that kind of lifestyle. So mm -hmm. you can imagine, even though I was scaling back, you know, I still, I was in a lease. So what are you going to do at that yeah. point? The house is getting built, you know, so there's money all over the place. And so that's what happens. And so when you have a situation where the person that you're uh, supposed to be with, who's supposed to be with you, mm -hmm. ain't with you, and yeah. that goes away, then um, you find yourself in a place where nobody wants to deal with you and there's no room at the end. And yeah. so that's how I wound up homeless. Now, how did I get myself out of it? Oh man, um, wow, <laughs> I will say this. Um, 
that's something that when you go through a, a traumatic experience, it's not something that you ever get over, but you have to put things into perspective. And what I realized was that I was still me. I was still that mind. Out, out of six people before me, they couldn't do what I did, you know, and I had done this before. I did it with Clue. You know, I, I had, um, you know, put people in situations where they were winning, and which then allowed me to win. So I just needed to get back to that. And once I realized that that was my gift, to be able to communicate in a way that made people comfortable, even though I was saying some really, really hurtful stuff, um, put me in a position to begin to win. And then I started um, deleting people because, you know, when you start popping here, they come again and all of a sudden your phone's yeah. back on, even though I paid the bill. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so um, I, I, did one more, I did one important thing that I don't think I did during that entire time, um, with very few exceptions. Um, I prayed and I said, God, do me a favor. I don't want to get married no more. I don't want to be with nobody no more. I just, look, I just want to date. But if it's in your wheelhouse <laughs> to put somebody in my life, <laughs> here's what I want. Mm -hmm. I said, number one, I want somebody who knew me before I had anything. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want somebody who's going to always be honest with me, even if I don't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. Number three, I want somebody so damn fine that there's no possible way I could ever want to cheat on. Them. Number mm -hmm. four, um, if I do this, I want to procreate because I'm going to leave a legacy. And um, about a week later, my best friend from college says, hey, um, my twin sister is, um, you know, going to be in Michigan. Do you want to come? And I said, yes. And I saw her. We went out. We walked. We walked um, my uh, my best friend's dogs and we got to talking. It started to rain. I told her I loved her. We kissed and we haven't been we haven't been apart since. So that's how I got out of homelessness. Long story, but it's all wow. important. Yeah. No, it is all important because it's all it's all a part of, of who we are. And um Taryn says she was homeless too. She said it was rough being homeless. So yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I you mean, know, you know what's rougher though? I'm gonna tell you what's rougher than being homeless. Being homeless on your first day with with a Jeep and nice clothes. Ain't nobody trying to give you no money. And that cardboard, <laughs> that cardboard Sunday like, really dog. Yeah. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you gotta wait like four or five weeks, you know. Wow. For to really take you seriously my goodness yes, wow well thank you so much for sharing that with us because i know that's you know even though i know it's been a while since it happened it's still really hard i'm sure to go back into that time you know yeah and i mean i, I think that that's one thing that is extremely important like people always talk about my wins and all these wonderful things but you know mm -hmm. I, I had some losses i still have losses you know, I've had, you know, clients that didn't work out, people who wanted uh, me to part the Red Sea for them, but they didn't have enough money for a packet of Kool-Aid. Um, you know, I've had, I've had situations where, you know, people promised things and didn't deliver. You know, I promised things, but people didn't follow instructions. You know, so you, you have those things. And I'm, I'm a depression sufferer. Like, that doesn't go away. It's like being an alcoholic. You don't have to take a drink. You're always going to be an alcoholic. So... Mm -hmm. You know, when you're creative and you're smart and you've gone through some things, that's a possibility that you're going to be a depression sufferer and you need to talk about it. You need to get some help. You need to, to, to get some counseling. If there's a chemical imbalance, look, ain't nothing wrong with a pill. You know, whatever it takes. And we, we have to be open about that because business and entrepreneurship is depressing as hell because everybody does this. Everybody who loves you says, well, Ava Laura, why don't you just get a job? You know they're hiring and they got good, good jobs down at the pick and save. Exactly. And you got a master's degree. Exactly. You, 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 you can make manager. Oh, yeah. Make mm -hmm. manager. Exactly. <laughs> you okay. It's so funny that you said that because um, I started a virtual co-working space and um, and that's exactly why I began it because, you know, we we done a, a, a show a couple of shows back. Um, talking about isolation and how entrepreneurs are so isolated, you know, especially yeah. working online. And I say, you know what, I really want to build a place, a community that's virtual, you know, where everybody can come from all over the world, wherever they are, and then we can just come and we know that it's quality people in it. Because you go to a Facebook group, you never know what you'll find in there, you know? <laughs> you just never know. You never know. No. Um, <laughs> So it's, you know, so I wanted to bring everyone together because I'm a depression sufferer as well um, with postpartum depression. And it was years. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I'm, I'm, no, happy, to see, I'm, I'm happy to see one of my, one of my kind. 
We do. Yeah. We need to start a club. We really yeah, do. Let's yeah. Because the, the more the more people try to hide it, the, 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 the more it has power. You know, because yeah. everybody feels like they're alone in it. And I hate to say this because this isn't necessarily a black or white thing, but in the black community, because well, oh, I've lived in it my entire life, well, you know, you've got to let Jesus work that out on you because Jesus is just going to lay his unchanging hands and the woman had an issue of blood and she went up to the well and just, if I could touch the hem of his garment, you need to find the garment of Jesus. Well, you know what? I done looked. I, yeah. I, I, I ain't found a shroud of Turing yet. I ain't seen, you know, Jesus's garment. So in the meantime, in between time, even Jesus said to a Pharisee one time, you know, you don't see a doctor when you're well. Exactly. So Jesus believed in doctors. Go see one. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's exactly and I tell what people that. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. All the time. I mean, this is my 11th year. And I tell people all the time when I first opened a Valores Healing Center, my clients were white. Because black folks were not coming for no counseling, for no coaching. They didn't. What, I mean, I heard, what, what will my pastor say? Oh, well, we just don't believe it. I, I, I promise you, I had a woman say, what would my pastor say? It's Who supposed to pay your bills. Your pastor? your pastor is not the one that's living your life. She really asked me that question. Well, pastor is living her, actually, pastor, pastor is living her life. Because if she wasn't paying the pastor all that money, she could live pastor's life, too. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, it, it's still a stigma. It's it's still definitely something yeah. that, um, you know, that Black folks absolutely suffer with. But I will say now um, that the majority of my clients are now Black women, so it has shifted. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, woo, it was well, rough. <laughs> on, on, that, on, on that idea, I want to on that idea, I do want to say that I, I hear a lot, and for me, right, I didn't know there were Black coaches. I could tell you a couple of years ago. I got that too. A couple of years ago. Uh, hey, I'm going to be real. We're going to be real. Boots boom, yeah, real. Oh, please, let's, let's keep it real. A couple of years ago, um, you know, when I was still in my, like, you know, I, you know, my lower level, what have you, I just, my mindset was just stuck in that, in that, hey, you get a job, you go to work, you know, you get, you go to school, you go to work, you, you, you become a man, like you said, a manager of, <laughs> of X, Y, and Z, and you made it. As long as you're getting that paycheck every week, you made it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I remember hearing the term coaches. Oh, get a life coach. Oh, get a business coach. Oh, and I'm like, only white people do that. Oh, we <laughs> who, who, who does, you know, who does that? It's only for them. It's only for them. And so now, now we have all of this, you know, technology and, you know, and now it's like, oh no, <laughs> you know, no, 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 hun. You know, hey, really, was box. So, <laughs> be told, we were the first ones doing all of this anyway. You know, let's just keep it real. Um, but hey, I, you know, that's a whole nother boots boom. Um, but yeah, I truthfully thought only white people were supposed to have coaches. Black people weren't supposed to have them. Hey, that was just my mindset back in the day. No, I mean, that, that is real. Oh. And it was so funny is when um when women used to go to my website it was so funny and they saw my picture and that was one of the reasons that my picture is all over my website they were like she's black <laughs> she went to, and, i mean sir and they would call me and they would tell me like you're black <laughs> <laughs> you went to howard yeah wow. and i wear head wraps like i'm black <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It was, I mean, really, like, oh. that was, I mean, they would literally call me with that expression. It was the funniest thing. Oh, yeah, I got that all the time. I mean, you, 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 hear, you hear a name like Dave Anderson, and, yeah. you know, you, you hear that I'm not going, hey, dog, hey. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm not doing any of that. So... Yeah. You know, yeah. people, I mean, my first job, they didn't know I was black. My very mm, first wow. job, the only people who knew were the executive producer and, and the host of the show. Everybody else thought I was going to be just a cute little precocious white kid. And they walked in there. And I'm telling you, if I had a dollar for every last one of those jaws, I had to pick up off the floor. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it, it, it was like that in a lot of places. And I don't know why we're like that. And when I say mm. we're like that, I'm talking about humanity, you know, but yeah. um. You know, th that, that's not, you know, that's not a problem I'm here to solve. I'm here to yeah. um, make people better, you know, all, all people. And, you know, that's just what it is. If you can't get past the fact that there's a black Dave Anderson, well, sorry for you. I'm right there with you, Dave. I got that a lot, too. Jessica. And then as soon as I showed you up. You speak to the so well. Oh, my yes. God. Yes. Um, how can I, can I help you? 
<laughs> you're, you're just, no, no, just, I'm just Walker. I'm, no, no. But, exactly. Yeah. yeah. All that. <laughs> yeah. Like, people are too busy trying to pronounce my name to figure out what race I am. Okay, they just confused. <laughs> well, it's a lot of it's a lot of vowels. They, they just house. get real confused. Like, if somebody bought an A, they'd be paying a lot of money on Will of Fortune to spell your name. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's a lot of vowels and consonants in your name. That's all I'm saying. Just... So, <laughs> let's move back to the entrepreneur. I'm sorry, we kind of went off on the tangent. Entrepreneurship. Right. So, mm -hmm. what did you do exactly? So you said something about, Ava Laura, what was it? It was communication. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you done made some terms up. Yes. Hold on, hold on. Find it. Let me find it. Okay. Did she, just, like, did she try? Oh, <laughs> communications innovator. There we go. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let me give you some background because people like to think that. See, because this is a thing that 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 some people who look like me do that I don't do. Hmm. Um, who who had the first podcast? Hmm. Um. I. Um, and by that, I mean this. There was a company called uh, The Black World Today. They were based in Baltimore. While I was working at 92Q in Baltimore, um, I realized that that wasn't going to make me any money. So I hooked up with these digital folks who were way ahead of their time. They had a lot more money than I did, and they wanted to pay me to do what I was doing on the radio for them to an audience that was very big um, in other places, in, in, in places in Europe and Asia and Africa. And I was like, well, hell yeah, I can go do a hip-hop show for these cats. And so what, they're going to come to this site and they're going to download this show every week, and I'm just going to play records and talk. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, cool. That was 1999, so that's what a good wow. three years before the very first podcast ever happened. Wow. Um, Spreaker, which is now um, you know partnered with um, iHeartMedia, was a company that um, I helped bring to the forefront. I bought Big Ticket, Lisa Wu, Susan Powder, people like that, um, in a space where you know podcasting did not have a real good platform, and so um, I did that. Um, let's see what else here. Um, if you have the iHeartRadio app and you look at um, the brackets and the contests and those little uh, funny tidbits and um, those pictures and bio pieces that you see on the app, you know, so aside from that, I was also a person who took what I knew from human behavior and made sure that um, I got a call one day from Ricky Smiley when I was still his producer. And he says, hey, man, guess what? I said, what? He said, the boss wants to buy the website. I said, buy the website for what? Uh, he said, for a million dollars. I said, don't sell it. He said, why not? I said, because if he's going to buy it from you for a million dollars, how much is he going to turn around and make from it? Exactly. I said, also, if you decide to leave this company, he'll own the name. And you won't yep. be able to get it back. If you think I'm lying, call Tom Joyner. So I staved off that sale until I left. And the second the deal was done on my um, on my exit contract, um, he sold that uh, he sold that site for well over a million dollars. But now he's stuck with them for life. But wow. I was the one who built that value up. I'm the one who put the chat room in there. I'm the one who had the social media integration before social media integration was the thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the same model that somebody named Michael Bayston took when he created something called Mingle City. So when it comes to communication innovating, I think I've earned the made up title. Oh, wow. Well, with that being said, <laughs> you guys, look, with that being said, who has a question here? Any, uh, anyone? Um, this is Ava Laura's thing. So I'm gonna let Ava Laura take girl, you take it over. Take take the tweet, get a seat. Cause you sure, ask another question. I'm looking <laughs> to see if people have asked questions in the chat and I just there's a lot of comments, but I don't see questions. If you have a question, um go ahead in the um Q and A and uh, ask your question there. If you want to come on and ask a question, you can mm -hmm. tweet for a seat, you can get in here and ask Dave personally. Um we got a shout out. Um, Taryn is just co-signing. She, she's just wow. She oh, so Taryn is saying she didn't even leave yet. So she's sitting in the car. She still hasn't left. <laughs> she was supposed to leave like in the beginning of the show. She still has not left. <laughs> wow. Well, thanks for staying around, Taryn. We, we appreciate you. We must be girl. doing something right. <laughs> oh, um, you so guys, if you have you a question. Hashtag. You can use the hashtag to ask a question as well. All right. Well, I do have a question for you, Dave. Sure. Um, you've talked about all these innovative things. You've talked about 
um, everything, man, you've done so much in the space. And Doesn't you feel like it. <laughs> really? Like, really? <laughs> like, no. seriously, you've done a lot. Um, and so you talked a little bit about people stealing your ideas. So I want to really go in on that a little bit deeper. <laughs> How do you deal with idea stealers? How do you yeah, deal with them? You know, first of all, first of all, okay, let's deal with a few things. There are certain things in this world you can trademark. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, there are certain things that you can patent. There are certain things that you can copyright. And then there are certain things that you can't. Okay. Um, I will say this to you. And this is what I tell my clients uh, when I coach them. And this is something that I had to tell myself through my depression. Um, if I gave you Michael Jordan's basketball, could you win me six NBA titles? Wow. Tiger Woods' golf clubs, can you win me one Masters? Hell, can you win me a PGA golf game? Just one PGA golf game if I gave you his clubs. No, if I gave you uh, Mozart's piano or Michael Jackson's uh, penny loafers, could you give me Thriller or uh, a little night music? You couldn't. So it's not about the idea. It's about the execution. And it's not always about, because there have been times when people have come and tried to do something and they went out first and then I came behind them with the actual thing and destroyed them. Um, but that's happened in history. Look at... Um, if I asked you right now, what would you call a chocolate cookie that is cookie, cream, and cookie? What would you call it? An Oreo. Wrong. You call it a Hydrox. But Hydrox is a horrible name. That's it sounds right. like a prescription. Hydrox I came out way Hydrox. before Oreo, but Oreo That's did right. something very important that Hydrox did not do. It had two things. Number one, it had a jingle, and number one, it had a marketing plan. Thank Who's that you. kid with oh. the Oreo cookie? See, now all of a sudden, like, oh, kids are like, they're like, See, mm -hmm. if, I, if, I, if I can tap into this, exactly. I don't need to be concerned with this, and I don't need to be concerned with what you want to do with what's in my pocket, and that's that wallet. So at the end of the day, if I can control this, everything else falls into place. So um, I'm a big believer in getting at the heart of the thing. When people go out and they push a product, they're pushing a product to sell. I don't do that. Even when I'm pushing a product, I'm telling you the value of a product, what this is going to do for you, not what it's going to do for my finances or my daughters or my wife. I'm telling you what it's going to do for you because that's why I did this. I did not do this for me. I did it for you. And that's the difference. So you got to get over the fact that somebody's going to come along and take your stuff, but can you outwork them? Can you outshine them? Can you outgrind them? Um, and that's the thing. We get caught up in, he stole my idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not putting any triscuits in your stomach. You feel me? Right. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I'm so glad that you said that about just taking it one step further and up leveling yeah. from quote unquote, the competition, you know, or whomever else it may be. That's, Wait, um, you know, maybe doing hold something up, similar. hold up uh -huh. time out. You just hit on something. That is the <laughs> other thing that, that I had to understand. And this one, mm -hmm. I would say I learned um, early on, but I didn't recognize until maybe about a year ago. And it's okay. this. Um, I no longer compete. Yeah. I yeah. don't believe in it. I am it. Here's the difference. Yeah. I have never been out to drink with either of you ladies, nor do I plan to. Um, mm -hmm. But I can imagine if you do drink at all, and I'm not saying that you do, but I don't think ever in your adult lives have you ever gone to a bar and ordered a rum and Pepsi. Or when you... Uh, cut your finger, you said, hey, I'd like an adhesive bandage. Or, hey, I'd like a, topic, uh, a topical anal analgesic to stop this cut and make it heal faster. You said, no, give me a rum and coke. I cut my finger. I want a flipping bandaid and put some neosporin on it while you're at it. That's because when you eliminate the competition by dominating and saying, this is it, then it's a wrap. Coke is it. I am stuck on bandaid because it's stuck on me. Neosporin mm -hmm. heals faster than anything else. You know, mm -hmm. my grandmama, God rest her soul, she was 89 years old. To the day she died, she said, baby, get me a Kleenex, not a facial yep. tissue. And that's yeah. the thing. Dave Anderson is a brand name. The business bully is a brand name. So you can go out here and, and pretend and, and be all rough shot and in your face, but yeah. <laughs> you, you're not going to be me. And that's fine. There are like, okay, better example. Forget me for a second. There was a singer, and I don't want to talk about his personal life, but I want to talk about the fact that when he started to become successful, every record label decided to get somebody who either looked or sounded a whole lot like him. His name was R. Kelly. And R. Kelly will tell you to this day, there's still only one me. 
you know, mm-hmm. 80 million records later, can you argue that? that? Yeah, I think we're fine with that too, especially because I have daughters. <laughs> but that's why I said without, I'm speaking musically. I'm speaking musically here. I'm not, I'm not trying to. You know what? But I, you know, I think you're right. And I think that actually happens over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. I think it happened to Drake. Oh, yeah. You know, all of a sudden, my skin to do started coming out and then everybody wanted to do. Exactly. Little Wayne's a big one. Yeah. You know, so this little Wayne started doing those little, what did I call them? I used to call them something, but metaphorical rap. Oh, you're talking, about, you're talking about young money punchlines. Yeah, yeah, those little, yeah. I feel like I'm at a beach looking at a gazer. You know, it's like, it was like, yeah. you know. <laughs> What the heck are they saying? You know, you talking <laughs> with me. I'm just gonna sip on this tea. Like, it's, exactly. it's, it's, you know, like but that's, 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 that's just, just what it is. You know, like everybody. But wants that, that goes one. back to what we talked about being authentic, mm-hmm. right? Like, right. if you're authentic, nobody else can be you. It's just gonna be an imitation of you, right? And, okay. you, and if you're an imitation, you better have a heck of a marketing plan. Because I honestly think Hydrox cookies tasted better, but I can't find a Hydrox cookie to save my mind. Wow. I forgot. I, I swear I forgot all about Hydrox until you said it. And that's the idea. Yep. <laughs> when you die, <laughs> and everybody real. else, everybody else sits around that's and competes. Real. If you ever watch like Mortal Kombat, go watch Mortal Kombat the movie. Not for even if you're not into that, but there's a lesson in there. There's a guy named Goro. He has four arms. He's eight foot five. He's huge, and he's sitting on the throne watching Johnny Cage and Luke Kang and everybody else fight. And he's sitting back chilling because they have to fight to get to him because he's the boss. He's the final level. He's yeah. that dude, and we don't do that. We want to compete. Oh, we want to figure out how we're going to deal with the competition. We're afraid of a flooded market. Man, psh, I'm Dave Anderson. Do you know how many speakers there are in this world? Do you have any idea how many people write books? You know? Yeah. Do you have any uh, people? How many people are, are in your face? Heck, there's somebody in your face so much that he beat out 17 legitimate Republicans to get the nomination. So at the mm. end of the day, there's always somebody. But if you're not prepared to dominate, you're prepared to lay down and get run over. So I'm going to let you go ahead and fight amongst yourselves. And I'm going to continue to step into my greatness. And whatever happens when you get to this level, then we can have a conversation. And if there's somebody beyond my level, and there are some, um, I will destroy them on the way up. But I'm not there yet. But right here? The way up. Is here? No, nah, it's cool. I love him. Yeah. Wow. And that's not arrogance. That's the truth. Like, if more people thought like that, I'll give you an example. Better example. If somebody told you they were it, that you couldn't do nothing without them, that this is what that is, you'd call them crazy. I'd call them Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one sees the Father but through me. Wow. Before Jesus, there were 610 commandments. He basically nodded them down to like three. Man. Just saying. <laughs> 1.7 billion people, you know, almost 20% and of the planet follows him. So this is why Dave Anderson is like, this is why he's spoken to how many people? Almost a million? No, o- over a million lives. Over a million. Yeah. Over a million lives. Mm-hmm. This is why. <laughs> This is why. This is, man. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for coming on. So, Ava Laura, go ahead and close this out. I know you're not that you haven't said enough, but Mm -hmm. is there anything that you want to leave our viewers with? Yes, there's so much I want to leave them with. I want to leave them with good feelings and warm and warm fuzzies. And no, I don't. Um, No, what I want to do is um, I want to talk about a couple of really cool things that have happened. Um, I am actually, um, my new book, which is coming out, it's called Sell It Like Jesus, um, Principles and Strategies wow. of the World's Greatest Salesman. That, that comes out in December, on December 6th. Um, wow. So you can actually pre-order that now. I'm actually putting the link in the chat room. And it also oh. comes with a copy of my uh, a lifetime membership for my new software called Viral Deadbeat. So imagine, for example, that you happen to take one of my viral videos, right? And that video has thousands and thousands of hits. People are sharing it. You run it through my viral deadbeat software and it creates a special link. And in that special link is an opt-in for your email, uh, your email campaign, um, a coupon for something that you're selling online. So you can take anybody's content and make it something that can be a lead magnet for you. 
you know, and yeah. like I always said, what does a deadbeat do? A deadbeat comes along after all the hard work is there and right. then begins, yeah. you know, to say, hey, yeah. I did it. That's why I call it exactly. viral deadbeat because deadbeats be winning, but I want you to be a good deadbeat. <laughs> so, you know, this software is going to be $97 a month. So I'm going to give you, not only are you going to order a copy of um, Sell It Like Jesus, but you're going to get a lifetime membership, the viral deadbeat. You're going to get a copy of Pitch Close, Up, Sell, Repeat, about 15 um, different texts and social media strategies. And I put that all in there for you um, for $37. Boom. Wow. Wow. So you can go to wow. com forward slash power chat. com forward slash power chat. And um, I'm always here. So if anybody wants to um, see me or get my craziness on a stage, college, university near them, uh, group organization, churches love to kick me out. So please, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let, let, let's rock and roll, man. I, I, I oh, enjoy I'm not sure it. when that new book comes. Oh, that'll be interesting. Well, I mean, <laughs> see, and that's the thing, right? Because I'm, I'm, I'm so in your face, but I'm a minister. People forget that I'm a minister. So I didn't just pull this out of my behind. This comes from years and years and years of studying and understanding that, well, Jesus was the world's greatest salesman. $9.8 trillion at the box office, $33 million every Sunday in tithing. You know, you're talking about billions and billions of dollars in merchandising. You know, toys, books, everything is still the greatest uh, selling book of all time. In, in, until this one comes out, I'm hoping. You're speaking. Yeah. <laughs> speaking into existence, right? Yeah, but I I'm, also want to add on to that. Like I, you said, we've been I, talking I, about religion a lot this this uh, episode, but definitely mm -hmm. I believe, um, and I know that there are some shady folks out there, and I'm not talking about them, but I do believe that we, even in our business, we need money to stay sustainable so we can get out there and help the other people that need help, right? Because there are people that do missionaries, you know, they help go and help third world countries, they help the homeless, all that good stuff. So there are some people out there that do actually use the money for good. So yes, um, how you want to feed? How you want to feed the homeless if you can't feed yourself? Exactly. exactly. You know? But exactly. you know, first first lady should not be having a, a, a Bentley when your parishioners are walking the church. No. That's all I'm saying. No, not at all. No, no, but I mean, you, yeah, Jesus wasn't time, broke. But that's a whole nother hour show. But um, right, thank you so much for having discussion. me. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Well, this has been an explosive uh, <laughs> edition I'm of Boots and Booms. Thank you all for hanging out with us. <laughs> oh, no we need. love that. We're good. No we're need. Really okay. good. Oh, guys. Just we, we, are here, we are here to dominate, not to lay down and die. So we're good. Oh. <laughs> That's, oh, by the way, I have to talk because uh, Dave and I have spoken offline. But Dave, the champ here, I'm re I'm renaming him the champ. Dave, the champ here. You know, I don't want to call him the bully. I think he's a champ. I think he is. You know, he's come through all of these obstacles and he's always come out on top. You know, just swinging mm -hmm. and out. And you know, so I want to just thank you once again for coming on the show. I appreciate you. Love you, bruh. Get out oh, there. And keep man. Doing what you're doing. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I really, really do appreciate the opportunity. For sure. Yeah, we love having you. Thank you for being here. And um, yeah, we are just, you know, we are so excited. Um, definitely, y'all come back next week. First of all, I'm happy that y'all are here, even on election night. Y'all hung with us, engaged. Yes. Thank you for taking the time out to feed your mind. Now you can go back to the madness if you want to. But <laughs> thank you for thank you for taking that moment. Um, we're going to be back next week, uh, Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern for even more Boots Boom. Get your PayPal popping and your business booming. Um, make sure you fill out the survey. Make sure you fill out the survey. Fill out that dang survey. Because we want to hear from you. Please. Fill out the survey. We want to hear from you. So we want to know what you need. What What is this PayPal? <laughs> Or you say get your PayPal, PayPal copy. No, Listen, you have not because you asked not. That's the wrong. That's the wrong PayPal link. If you are so moved, <laughs> if something in here just touched your spirit right now, you go ahead and drop something in that PayPal. Oh my you know, not too many people can get a Valor to just be like, I, so they thank you so much. Not they not to me PayPal. I was looking at. <laughs> You are the champ. Dave is the champ. He has got a neighbor Lord to be like, what, what just happened in my chat room? <laughs> you, you know, you, that's your fault. I hijacked your show. That's the y'all did this. I was not about you. Listen, I let you hijack. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for letting me hijack your show. <laughs> as I say, hey, I let you keep that. I let you keep that. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much for joining us. PayPal popping, relationships booming. 
Um, I don't know. What was her thing? Yeah, boom, that's boom. You, you just messed it. <laughs> <laughs> just just boom. <laughs> now. K pal popping. Oh, goodness. We love you all. I got we'll it. Life you in your business to explode. Week. Your life in your business to explode. That's what it was. Okay. Bye. See you guys next Tuesday. <laughs>